All right, so Lily here from the Clark Hewlings Fund, the data analyst, and I'm sitting here today with Donna, who was a 2018 Entrepreneur Fellow, right? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. yes. And I like her background there. It's one of her own paintings. So, you know, perfect for virtualizing. Yep, promote yourself. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. And, you know, we've got um, a lot going on in terms of the world right now. The pandemic is going on. And really, we're here today to talk about how artists are adapting. And Donna has had some really interesting things that she's done to kind of keep the art business going throughout this, this strange time. So welcome. Oh, thanks. And absolutely. And um, preparing for this was actually done and started before this even happened. So the COVID was kind of a test to my commitment to my business. And so one of sure. the things that made it work is in order to do that, I have to know myself, what my strengths are, what my, my weaknesses are, and where I wanted to go with my business. And so I had done that and I had set my plans and I knew I had a plan. It was a yearly plan that I broke it up into months and weeks. So I, I'm good. I have it working. And then all okay, sudden, you were prepared. Absolutely. And then all of a sudden it wasn't working because of COVID. And so at that point, um, a lot of people were doing a lot of things. But the one thing that was certainly known is nobody knew what was going to happen. Things were closing, things were opening. There were all kinds of options and things to do. And I thought about it. And I have two friends. They're not Clark Hewlings people, but they're very mm -hmm. business-oriented artists. And so we started getting together, um, and we're older, you know, like the over 50 age, just saying. <laughs> so it's not as, as I could give a, I don't care about computers. Much. Yeah. I'm not into that. I'm not into the, so that's not where my business is. And we were all in the same thing. What are we going to do? And I was like, well, I have a plan. And I don't think I'm going to change my plan. And they had plans. They knew what they wanted to do long term, short term. I mean, we all have our, the gallery needs stuff for the fall, the gallery needs things for the spring. Sure. You know? And I was lucky enough where my slow season is the summer. It's when okay. we do stuff. So I had a good early spring and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm doing well this fall. So it hasn't impacted me as much as people who do summer sales at you know, festivals and things. Sure. Um, they got smacked. You know, I was yeah. not in that category. Thank you very much. And tell us a little more about this virtual painting that you mentioned. So Donna had mentioned in our pandemic kind of surveys that she's doing some really interesting stuff. Tell us a little more about that. Sure. Um, so it's not like virtual where we sit on the computer and, ha you know, that's distracting to me. But what's not distracting is I got to paint. And so I know what I'm going to paint. And... Jill and Karen know what they need to paint and what they want mm -hmm. to paint. So it was almost like having accountability partners. And yeah. Where, like, I would wake up, and I'm the early riser, although some are more early, but Karen's like a late-night 24-7 painter, and then she crashes for three days, and then paints okay. for like five. And so I just sent a text, right? I'm in the studio. I'm going to accomplish this today. Here's a picture of what I'm doing. Here's my starting point. Mm -hmm. I'll catch up with you shortly and then when she gets it she's like well I'm working on this or I saw this and it made me think of that or and Karen's been selling like crazy mm -hmm. um, she's been so really just for accountability you had it's kind of to keep each other accountable and um, are these past fellows or a mixture of both or uh, no one one was going to apply for a fellow one was actually um, a plein air painter who I paint with at Mystic Seaport twice a year and that was canceled so it originally started as us getting ready and we're going to go paint together and do this and we're going to go key and we're going to paint this and we're going to do that and it's all exciting. And then it wasn't, but we decided that we were still going to paint and we were still going to go out and we're going to do this and we were going to do mm -hmm. that. So um, texting, the phone is usually with, I mean, who doesn't have their phone with them? Even if it's yeah. turned up, it's with you, right? So at this point, I can work at my own time, in my own space and not have the ringing, not have this, but I can pick it up and text her, here I am, click, here's my photo, what do you think? This is where I'm going. And I, 
So it's like working together with someone versus being totally in isolation, which is something that, you know, that kind of stifles creativity, right? A lot of the research shows that artists gain their creativity from engaging in cultural events. And a lot of those things weren't happening for a while. And the data shows that now it's trending towards being more virtual, hence the Clark Hewlings Fund Virtualize Your Art Business Conference. But um, yeah, that's kind of the status quo right now. Right. And we also like uh, Streamline was doing videos every day at three. And some of them were interesting, some of them weren't. And you could really catch up with different artists and what they were doing. And once again, it was like, well, I'll watch that. No, I won't. I'll watch it later. Yes, I will. Oh, well, look at this. And then you call them and say, did you see this? Go look at that. What do you think about the whole that? network? Right. And then it just, we start talking about art. We start talking about other people's art. We start talking about our art. We're still entering shows. We're still making sales. We still have art yeah. businesses to run. And all three of us have built in the past through newsletters and old fashioned communication, um, setting up sales channels. And this is how we sell our work that we found that because we had those solid things, that mm -hmm. was a very helpful thing because mm -hmm. those- So maybe you didn't have to adapt just to Go off of what you're saying it sounds like you already had the foundation set up with your email marketing and your networking and your the different sales strategy that you would use in the past so you had a network of people and and buyers and collectors or whatever it they may be support you. they want to support you yeah in whatever way they can and in the moment i was i did have a moment i whatever call it a moment of crisis there was no crisis but it was in my head um yeah. where Everybody's doing these virtual studio tours. Everybody's doing this, oh, look, I got this. And I am not the person who's going to open up questions. And, oh, look what I got. I'm not that person. Okay? It just doesn't it's fit with you. For me. It, it's not me. Because I know you don't care. I got new brushes. I care. And the first thing I'm going to do is go paint. And if you want to watch me, that's fine. But I'm not setting that up. Yeah. It's not happening. So there was a point where everybody's doing these videos and doing this all this stuff online and trying to get people to follow them and everything. And I sat there and said, you know, I have a choice to make. Do I want to do that? Do I want to spend my time learning about videos? Do I want to spend my time learning about and setting up my studio? Do I want to do this? Do I want to do that? And we all discussed it. And actually, all of us did not, we decided, no, the time spent mm -hmm. doing videos, the time spent learning that, the time spent, you know, trying to learn all these new techniques and get all these new followers would be ignoring our current customers, would be ignoring mm -hmm. our current avail avail availability and opportunity to paint. You know, sure. so how you look at it, here's an opportunity to paint. There's no schedule. You yeah. Can, you can do whatever you want. So it sounds oh, like it felt kind of freeing. And you also decided to pivot and focus on your the audience then customer base that you already had engaged versus trying to engage a new audience. Right. I yeah. my collectors, I know them all by name. And I, I may not do, and you'll look, there's not a lot of emails that are public on my website, uh, newsletters, but I send out newsletters and I send out to my collectors. Here's what mm -hmm. I, and I did not, every newsletter I got, ugh, couldn't stand it. I know it's a trying time. We're all in this to get, get, you know, I'm sorry. Yes, I know that. But <laughs> Focusing so I think the word unprecedented has been used a million times, right? In those yeah, emails. I know. I, I, I probably, everybody's going, what a jerk. And I'm like, yes, I am. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, that's obvious. And I hate talking about the obvious. And why mm -hmm. should I start my newsletter with, we're all sad together. And I'm not doing that. I'm not going to do that. So I said, here's the plan, folks. I'm working on some paintings here. All right, I'm going to do a couple sailboats. I'm going to do this. And you know what? I'm going to do a bird. Anybody have an idea what bird they want? Because I'm going to do a vulture. Oh, ah, so you were engaging your collectors and your audience in your art in a way that they could actually have a say to kind of help you determine how it goes. Not only that, but they could have something to focus on instead of all this. I mean, all right, it's everywhere. Positivity. Great. Forget about it. It's everywhere. Why do I have to talk about it? I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to deal with it. I'm having a good time painting. That was my, sure. was, now it wasn't like that all the time. There sure. Was time I was like, oh, I can't do this. Yeah. But just getting away from everything and then decided that my mindset was going to be, how am I going to do this in a positive way? And mm -hmm. 
I was very happy to have had two good painting friends who had the same mindset, you know, and one of them lives up in Connecticut and one of them has a daughter who lives in New York. So they were really feeling it all the way around, but chose themselves also to do positive things and not dwell because you have a chance your outlook and what you perceive and what you want is what you're going to get. It's like self-determination or it's like uh, staying positive. Right. Now it's like, uh, what do they call it when um, when you think of something, it, it, it kind of makes it happen. You know, manifesting like, or maybe it's like some kind of just just really keeping your attitude. Yeah. If you keep thinking and looking at the bad stuff and looking at, oh, my God, this is going to happen. OK, it's going to happen. So. Why so it sounds like you're the network that you built, the people that you were painting with and having as kind of like accountability partners. It all culminates in being able to get through this time in a way that you know, you could stay sane and you can really focus on your business and continue, you know, having sales and just running your art business. Absolutely. And it's, you know, if you focus on something good, it really helps you, you know, get, turn off the TV, turn off, don't listen to that stuff. Don't read the paper. I'm not saying don't be informed. Disconnect for a bit. Friends, that's fine. Know what's happening. However, if you sit and dwell on it, you're going to put yourself over here when you could be doing something positive for yourself. Yeah. Achieving some sort of goal. You could be, you know, what, what artist doesn't have time to paint to build some inventory? Yeah. You know, and, and I heard artists say, well, that's like, that's like playing music on the Titanic when it sinks. I'm like, okay, good for them. I'm glad they did. What were they going to do? Sit and cry or play music? They so you've really got to forge ahead, keep working, keep painting attitude. Right. And, you know, I think this is a good place for us to stop because leaving on that note, right, in the, the effort of kind of inspiring other artists and giving them some feedback, I think you've done a great job of, of adapting your business during the pandemic. And uh, thanks for sharing all this information with us. Oh, anytime. Anytime. And if, um, if anyone has positive or negative comments, they can always email me. You know, okay. My name will be there. There's great. There's only five other Donnelly Nazios. None of them paint. Perfect. Thanks, Donna. You're welcome.